The next view that we're going to look at is the apical four-chamber view. This one is arguably one of the prettier views of echocardiography, but I think they're all pretty. It's like picking children. You can't do it. So from here, we're going to bring the probe out to a different position on the chest. And I usually say that our starting point is at about the sixth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line with the indicator between 2 and 3 o'clock, so at about 2, 2.30. And we're shooting the beam from that position on the chest towards the patient's right scapula. And here you can see kind of a cross section of what we're doing with the beam. And then we get this upside down image of the heart with the apex at the top of the screen here, the base is back here, the right side's over here, left side's over here. So remember, if you get disoriented, make sure you just ask yourself, where's the apex, where's the base, where's right, where's left? And that's what we're doing. And let's go through that a little bit more. So there we can see the interventricular septum. There's the interatrial septum. And let's look at this in real time. So here's roughly our probe positioning. This is where you start looking, but you're going to make adjustments to help you find it. And very important to recognize left ventricle from right ventricle and differentiate the two. Because sometimes we make mistakes, we're not in a cardiac setting, or we don't realize our indicator's in the wrong direction. So we can't just rely on where they are on the screen. We have to recognize the differences. So left ventricle more bullet shaped, a little bit wider diameter. Uh, if we flatten our probe out, we'll see the aortic valve exiting the left ventricle. So those are clues to which side is left. The right side has more of a triangular shape. The tricuspid valve sits just slightly closer to the apex compared to the mitral valve. And in some views, we can see the moderator band coming down. We don't see it that well in this view. You can see it in the cartoon. But those are things to help us differentiate right ventricle from left ventricle so we can avoid diagnostic errors from probe malpositioning or setting abnormalities. So for the apical four, indicator is out at about between two and three o'clock. We come out to about the sixth intercostal space and we wiggle our way up into the rib spaces until we see the heart. We try to make it vertical. I'm going to pull you back a little bit towards me. So we see all four chambers vertically. We get this view like this. We need to go out more lateral and straighten it out. We want the septum straight up and down. My hope is if you accidentally reverse the view and have the ventricles flipped that you will be able to use the features of the different ventricles and their appearance to help you troubleshoot and recognize that mistake and not make diagnostic errors. If it looks kind of like this where the right ventricle is flattened, we need to rotate clockwise a little bit. Big breath in, and then blow it all the way out and hold a second. Sometimes we may want to see the aortic valve, so we'll just adjust a little bit to where we see that. 
and the last few that we're going to do, and this is one that maybe if you've done fast exams and trauma and things like that, it looks familiar. So this is the subcostal or the subxiphoid view. And if we're in an echo setting or a cardiac setting, our indicator is going to be directed towards the patient's left. We're going to get underneath the xiphoid and really flat on the abdomen, shooting the beam up through the heart like this. We see this image here with the apex on this side of the screen. The base is back here. Right is closest to our transducer, and then this is left side. And I really like to point out how, see how we're kind of push into the abdominal tissue to get this view underneath the xiphoid process. That's a good positioning of the hand and also you can see the hand is all on top. You cannot have any part of your hand underneath your probe or you won't be able to get it flat enough to get a good view of the heart from here. Again we'll point out the liver edge is here, apex, base, right, left, mitral valve, tricuspid valve. Here's what that might look like in real time. And I'll just point out again the heart. It's a three-dimensional structure. Often we can fool ourselves by making judgments from a single view. I generally recommend a against making judgments from a single view because you can fool yourself if the image is not perfect or the slice is off. Again, we're taking a two-dimensional slice through a three-dimensional dynamic moving structure. So we always want multiple views to help us conceptualize what the heart is doing in all dimensions in real time and make informed decisions. All right, let's do sub -xiphoid heart. So indicator is towards about three o'clock. We come under the xiphoid. And we'll ask her for a big breath and hold. And we get a pretty good view of the heart here. Go ahead and relax when you're ready. Sometimes if you flatten the probe, you can see the aortic valve from this view. We can really see the tricuspid well. And in some patients, if they have a good sub -xiphoid view, we can get short axis views. So a big breath. And we can get this view out here where we see the pulmonic valve really well. And we can even see right and left pulmonary artery branches right down here. Okay, relax. And then a lot of times we'll do the IVC view from here as well. So we just get in that position, indicators towards the head, rock up till we see the heart and a little bit sideways. And we can see the IVC entering the right atrium and we see how it changes shape with respiration. The aorta is right there, IVC right there.